Hi, my name is John Salzman. I'm a consultant knee surgeon from Germany as well as Switzerland. Today I'm going to present to you an AutoCAD procedure for a patella defect with underlying trochleoplasty. The case is a 23-year-old female teacher who liked to play basketball. She had a chronic patella instability for years on her left knee joints. She had previous arthroscopic surgeries on her left knee joint with no getting better of the instability. In the last months prior to my consultation, the patient suffered from increasing pain and ongoing severe instability with permanent luxations as well as subluxations. The clinical findings in my office were the patient had straight legs and no signs of malrotation. She had a very clear apprehension sign which was positive until 80 degrees of flexion with a clear J sign and she had also severe patellofemoral pain with underlying crepitus. The x-rays in this patient showed on the lateral view all signs of trochlear dysplasia, meaning a supratrochlear spur or a bump, a double contour as well as a crossing sign, while the patella height was absolutely normal. The long standing x-ray showed a straight leg and we also performed in this patient an MRI-based rotational analysis of both lower extremities and we didn't find any mal rotation. On axial views on her MRI, we clearly saw this trochlear dysplasia with a cliff sign and a more or less convex configuration of the trochlea, meaning a trochlear dysplasia type D, plus a lateralized patella, plus a full thickness, partially also touching the subchondral bone cartilage defect on the center of her kneecap. In summary, this patient was suffering from severe patella instability with underlying trochlear dysplasia de jure type D. Furthermore, she had a large ICS grade B to C patella cartilage defect with beginning early osteoarthritis in a very young subject. Our surgical approach was after initial diagnostic arthroscopy where we didn't find anything spectacular. We performed via lateral atrotomy, a typical trochlear plasty, using the technique of B writer with a thin flap trochleoplasty. We lateralized the trochlea, removed the supratrochlear bump, and refixed now the concave trochlea using vicryl bands very effectively. Hereafter, the kneecap showed a very good stability. In the next step, we took out cartilage from the patella. After finishing the trochleoplasty, we turned our attention to the kneecap. We debrided the cartilage and the good looking cartilage pieces as well as cartilage from the defect edge was cut down into smaller pieces at the back table and then it was collected with a designated shaver device for further particulation and then we collected that in a graft net tissue collector. In the next step, we mixed the minced cartilage with autologous fluid to have a paste-like appearance. And in the final step of the AutoCAD procedure, after the brightment of the cartilage defect, we put the chips at the patella defect to cover it up and fixed it with an autologous fibrin glue on top. So the final appearance of the surgical approach was maximally invasive, but very effective as a one-step procedure for the patient addressing the trochlear dysplasia as well as the patella defect, which is very often seen in combination. In such cases, it is often required at the same time to perform a tuberosity osteotomy and in selected cases to perform a virus producing or even malrotation femoral osteotomy. Also, in many cases, finally to close up the knee joint performing an MPFL plasty. The rehabilitation in this patient was four to six weeks of partial weight bearing with 15 kilograms. Uh, the limitation of the flexion was 30 degrees in the first two weeks, 60 at week three and four, and 90 at week five and six. She commenced to full range of motion as well as full weight bearing at week six. She returned to biking and swimming 12 weeks after the operation. 
She slowly returned to running six months after the operation. As well, she returned to sports-specific training already six months after the operation and returned to full sporting activity 12 months after the operation. Case summary here. It has been a pretty invasive but all at once procedure. The approach was purely autologous and it was a highly biologic approach only using her own material. She had a pretty long rehabilitation, but finally she had a very good patella stability plus alignment with a restored joint surface at her patella with the idea to have a good stability, good sporting ability and furthermore to prevent the progression of early OA. Thank you very much.